Well, I put uh, 14 on quick. There's 17 following on GTA suspect now. Two LAPD cars just gone code 3 down uh, Washington. Yeah, right here. Look at my car. Is it good right there? He's driving yeah. over here in the rain. People have no yeah. idea how to drive at all. Yeah, so explain where you're from, how long have you been doing this, why Why are you a stringer? Um, well, loud. Now I'm going to have to do this window up. No problem. It's pissing in the rain. Well, I've come from, I was born in uh, London but moved to the south coast in the UK uh, when I was very young, so you know. Grew up in the English countryside, you know, it's, it's great to grow up, but uh, when you get a little bit older, you strive a little bit more excitement. So it's kind of when I turned 18, came over here with my brother Howard, um, started a company, and we just, you know, we aim to get the most exciting footage that we can get on tape. What is that for you? Um, most exciting footage we can get is probably. Uh, the high speed pursuit, anything where we actually get into the action rather than sitting at home and watching on TV, anything that we can get right in the middle of the action, high speed pursuits, um, fires where you get there before the fire department, that type of thing, anything where you know the adrenaline's pumping, that type of thing. You know, some people go bungee jumping, um, parachute jump, that type of thing to get their kicks, whereas we just, uh, you know, we get shot at basically. And that's <laughs> the main kick of it it's all it's about the adrenaline you know the adrenaline rush we're complete adrenaline junkies all right that was a great sound bite. we pretty much get shot at look at the camera and say that one okay we pretty much get shot at that's what we live for that's where we get our kicks from have you ever had bullets with by you yeah i've um a couple of times i can remember there was a swat standoff um in compton where there was a guy with an ak-47 firing you know just unleashing a whole load of rounds um, literally like 10 feet away from me. I mean, that was that was the first experience of mine when I came over here and it was kind of like, okay, if that's what I'm in for, then I'm in it for the long haul. Yeah, I love Los Angeles. It has the temperature, it has the beach, you know, it has the mountains, I love that, and it has the crime rate too. And that's, you know, that's what we live for. All right, um, hold your current I'm recording and just uh, with some excitement say we are we're going to a crash looks like someone's dead on the freeway possibly other people injured just okay you know the usual all right okay what we're going to right now we've got um it's a crash on the freeway it's a little bit um sorry, let me start that one again um i lose control okay what we're going to right now is a crash on the freeway it's possible um fatality there's a body laying in the roadway um, with multiple other injuries. Um, we're trying to get there now, um, but we're a little way away, but uh, we'll see what we got going down there. Yeah, this is what you get when it rains in Los Angeles. It's, it's crazy, people just don't know how to drive. That's where we have the advantage, being from England. You grow up driving in this weather, it's crazy. Dad? My dad's a driving instructor, he told me everything I knew. <laughs> Alright, cool. Uh, I probably shot that guy, did Chantel, uh, 
Yeah. The guy who did my motorcycles, the one I've always wanted, he, uh, him and I made nice. And by him and I making nice, it's really cool. Like, I would never, I didn't even want Chantel to cut the other stuff, but because she's in TV land and was gonna try to sell it, I let her. But now that my buddy's back, no way, man. No going, way. We're gonna just see what's going on with that GTA suspect. Yeah, go there. for it. <clears throat> I'm getting some, dude, it's raining outside, it's sweet. <clears throat> That's why they wet the roads in all these commercials, isn't it? So it looks uh, good all going. Here we go. That's what fucking annoys me about this weather. You can't pick up shit on the scan. Is when it's raining there, you can't see the road markings. The entire road surface is shiny and greasy. You cannot see the road. Explain how um, how the brothers have advanced from sitting in the car together so everyone has their own car. You guys are growing. Yeah, this guy gets out of my way. Yeah, no, when we first came over, we we had like a, a beaten up old Buick. We had you know one scanner that we bought for a hundred dollars from Radio Shack. We used to listen to a couple of frequencies, we didn't know what codes they were talking about. But now, 10 years down the line, we've both got two cars fully kitted out with computers, scanners, um, we have high-end high -end video cameras, we have the whole lot. You know, we know codes, we know everything, so you know, it goes from one tiny little car and a little scanner in the middle of South Central to uh, a couple of cars all over the city with you know the top end video cameras, top end scanners, we've got mobile computers in there that we fax the stations from. It's just a completely different you know setup now. And we you know taken the stringer world by storm. Alright before you're a stringer you're a world famous real good photographer explain how those stills turned into meeting the CHP. Yeah, my background basically, I'm I'm a trained photographer. Um, so you know, I've always you know since leaving school, I've done you know this and that with photography, done sports photography and everything like that. Came over to uh, Los Angeles, you know, we'd go to scenes, accidents, that type of thing, fires and everything. Um, and I'd often I'd take my stills camera too, you know, um, and just getting talking to the highway patrol and that. You know, they'd often want. Um, help with evidence so I just you know I pulled my camera and said look if you want a couple of pictures taken of the scene I'll do it for you um, now whenever I get to the scene it's like hey how you doing you know he you got your camera with you yeah and I'll shoot I'll shoot all the stills so we got a very good relationship with the highway patrol you know we often get um, access to accident scenes um, that other guys don't get because we do this um, but yeah it's it's kind of it's taken a, a turn from doing weddings and sports photography to now shooting dead bodies on the freeway it's kind of uh, a vast difference but you know I'll, I'll take on whatever gets thrown at me really yeah, so explain about some of the some of the shots you've got to take with CHP hold on I'm being important ah. oh, let me draw that Oof, hold on All right, what, is the, what kind of stuff did you get to see with CHP that you normally wouldn't see behind the yellow tape? You were in well, front of the yellow tape. Yeah, it's, um, you know, we get given access because we do all the evidence photos and that. And, uh, you know, they'll lift, lift the covers off the bodies, you know, for the coroner's report, that type of thing. Um, you know, burnt bodies in cars, they need close-ups of, you know, where the seat buckle was in to prove that they were wearing a seatbelt, that type of thing. You know, they give us exclusive access, they basically want us to document the whole thing, so, you know, I'll go through and take pictures from every angle, you know, of the body laying there, you know, it's just like, you know, I've taken pictures of bodies that have been split in two, that have been, um, 
you know, completely burnt beyond recognition that you, you know, you can't, you wouldn't even recognize it as a body. It's kind of, you've got to have a stomach to do it. Um, it's not something everybody can do. But I thought you, you know, this relationship we have with the Highway Patrol, you get to see some pretty horrific stuff. But, you know, we do them a favor. I don't mind helping them out at all. You know, if I get into an accident, they're the first ones on scene helping me. So that's the least I can do. All right, I don't know how much you want to get into this, but um, pretty much, uh, Three, there's there's like there's six or seven stringers in this. Half of us are married, half of us aren't. I've already been with all the marriage. How does this do with relationships? Well, can, yeah. How does it do with the relationships? Well, considering you're out most of the night, you've either, you're either going to be single or marry somebody that puts up with you being out all night. And it, you know, in the best case scenario, you meet somebody that does the same thing, which is not, you know, you're not probably not going to find that. But luckily. My girlfriend doesn't mind that I do it, and she gets a kick out of it as well, but she's more of the, the parachute jumping, bungee jumping, uh, adrenaline junkie than the getting shot at junkie, but yeah, I'll give it to her. She gets herself into some of this stuff too, but no, meeting somebody that's going to put up with this crap is just like, yeah, you haven't got a good chance of meeting somebody. <laughs> All right, cool.